Hello everyone, it's Chemicator. Welcome back to my channel. Benzene and cyclooctatetraene are familiar examples of how the properties of a compound give us information about this molecular structure. Although both are represented as a cyclic array of alternating double not single bonds, we interpret this representation quite differently. Benzene is an aromatic compound, while cyclooctatetraene is a polyene which is more reactive than benzene. The reason for this difference is that cyclooctatetraene is not a planar molecule and adopts a top-like conformation. As a result, the double bonds cannot effectively interact with each other to form an aromatic system. However, there is yet another molecule that provides a beautiful example of how the unusual properties of a substance led to the unprecedented conclusion about this molecular structure. This compound with the molecular formula C10H10 is called bolvilin. The unusual feature of this molecule is that it has no permanent carbon-carbon bonds. All carbon atoms are either bonded or not bonded, and its structure can't be defined in the conventional sense. This fluctional behavior has applications in functional materials and medicines. Fluctional or non-rigid molecules are molecules that undergo dynamic movement such that some or all of their atoms interchange. Dimethylformamide is a classic example of a fluctional molecule. If you think of it as a rigid molecule, two methyl groups would seem different because one is cis to the carbonyl group and other is trans. However, at temperature near 100 degree, we can't distinguish between two methyl groups because they exchange their position very quickly due to bond rotation. Another example is cyclohexane, which exhibits functional behavior during the ring inversion process where axial and equatorial hydrogens interchange their positions. So it doesn't have a fixed conformation as we often draw it on paper. Organometallic compounds also show astonishing fluctional behavior. For example, take a look at this iron complex where one of the cyclopentadiene rings bind to the metal as a pentaheptal ligand, and the other is attached via a sigma bond to the metal center. Now focus on the cyclopentane ring. At first glance, you might think there are three types of hydrogens, one attached to the alpha position of iron, and two sets attached to the double bond. But experiments reveal that all the hydrogens are actually the same, with no difference between them. The surprising result comes from the fact that iron moves around the cyclopentane ligand. This fluctional behavior is known as ring whizzing or ring walking. Now let's back to our case. In bolvilin, the cyclopropane ring is attached to the three vinyl arms, which join to the methane group. This unique structure set the stage for cup rearrangement. The simplest cup rearrangement occurs in vine 5 hexadiene, in which three single bonds are between two double bonds. These rearrangements generate two identical products. Now look at the bolvilin structure. Notice that it can be divided into three faces, and each face includes three single bonds between two double bonds. So just like one 5 hexadiene, the cop rearrangement occurs in the system in left, right, and back face of the molecule, resulting in producing degenerate structures. This is the reason for fluctional behavior of bolvilin. In other words, during the cop rearrangement, at the same time, bonds are broken and created, and all carbon and hydrogen atoms are in a permanent interchange, so they don't have a fixed position. Now let's involve some simple math. Bolvilin is made of up 10 carbon atoms that are interchangeable with one another. We can represent this by 10 factorial to calculate the number of ways to arrange a set of objects in a specific order, in this case, the carbon atoms. Notice that bolvilin has a threefold axis of symmetry which passes through the center of the cyclopropane and includes the methane group. This symmetry generates three identical structures. Therefore, we calculate the number of isomers during this self-replicating cup rearrangement by dividing 10 factorial by 3, resulting in 1,209,600 degenerate structures. The interesting fact about bolvilin is that its existence was initially only a concept in the mind of scientists. 
Surely, this was one of the most daring predictions ever made in the history of chemistry. This bold prediction was made in 1963 by William Doring and Wolfgang Roth. It's a fascinating story, almost like playing a game with molecules and numbers. So if you're ready to play, let's dive right into it. Doring and Roth began with the assumption that the bond dissociation energy of the carbon-carbon single bond in ethane is 347 kilojoules per mole. It was also known that the activation energy for the homolysis of one butene to form a methyl radical and an other radical is 259 kilojoules per mole. The 88 kilojoules per mole difference was attributed to the civilization of the allylic radical by the localization of the p electrons. Based on this observation, Doring and Roth suggested that the activation energy for breaking the central bound in 1,5 hexadiene would be 171 kilojoules per mole, as it produces two allylic species. However, when 1,5 hexadiene is heated above 200 degree, it doesn't dissociate into radicals. Instead, it undergoes a Cop rearrangement. This is because the activation energy for the Cop rearrangement is 146 kilojoules per mole which is 25 kilojoules per mole lower than the energy required for the homolytic cleavage of the central bond in the system. Doring and Roth also realized that a carbon-carbon single bond could be broken more easily if it was part of the cyclopropane ring. Look at this reaction in which cis 12 dideuter cyclopropane is converted to its trans conformation. In the first step, the carbon-carbon bond undergoes homolytic cleavage to create a diradical transition state. After that, a bond rotation occurs in the molecule. Next, bond reclosure produces a trans product. The energy required for breaking the carbon-carbon bond in this reaction is 267 kJ per mole. This value is 80 kJ per mole lower than the bond dissociation energy of the carbon-carbon bond in ethene. The reason is the potential strength energy of the cyclopropane ring, which makes breaking the carbon-carbon bond easier than in ethene. Cyclopropane is a unique ring in chemistry. If you want to know more about this amazing molecule, check out this video. Till now, we've compared the energy required for breaking the carbon-carbon bond in ethene, the other radical and cyclopropane, and found that this energy in these two systems is lower than in ethene. Now, what happens if we combine the cyclopropane ring and allylic system to calculate the energy required for breaking the carbon-carbon bond? Doring and Roth then considered the consequence of combining the effects of allylic stabilization and the strain of a cyclopropane ring in 1,2 divinyl cyclopropane, where the carbon-carbon bond is part of a cyclopropane ring and has two allyl arms. Before continuing, pause the video and try to calculate the energy for breaking this bond based on the values from the previous examples. In this case, we have two allylic systems, each of which decreases the energy by 88 kJ per mole. Cyclopropane also decreases the energy by 80 kJ per mole. As a result, the energy required for breaking the carbon-carbon bond is 91 kJ per mole. This compound can exist in both trans and cis conformations. The trans form was a known substance and was reported to rearrange into cyclohepta 14 diene upon heating to 190 degree. The reaction likely proceed via homolysis of the 1-2 bond of cyclopropane ring, forming a pair of resonance stabilized allylic radicals. These radicals can undergo conformational changes by single bond rotation, and the final product is formed through ring closure. Doring and Roth would have liked to compare the properties of the cis isomer of 1,2 divinyl cyclopropane with those of the trans isomer. However, the cis isomer was not a noun compound. Vogel, Oates, and Gajek had attempted to prepare the cis conformation through Hoffman elimination of trimethylamine from the cis isomer of 1,2 bis beta dimethyl aminoethyl cyclopropane but the only product they could isolate was cyclohepta 14 diene This outcome occurs because in the cis conformation, a co rearrangement leads directly to cyclohepta 14 diene preventing isolation of the cis product. Doring and Roth then attempted to prepare the cis isomer by cyclopropanation of cis 135 hexatriene 
allow several sacropropane derivatives, therefore no cis isomer could be detected in the product mixture. At this point, they thought it would be better to study the co arrangement using NMR experiments instead of isolating the cis conformation. However, for this to work, the process would need to be fast enough to allow measurement of the rearrangement rate on the NMR time scale. They proposed that this criterion could be achieved if the co arrangement occurs in a ring. 3,4-homotropylidine is a larger ring system that incorporates the cis 12 divinyl sacropropane unit, making it suitable for such studies. Here, you can see the dynamic NMR experiment they conducted at three different temperatures to calculate the rate of the rearrangement. As you can see, the signals at each temperature show different splitting patterns. I won't go into the details of this experiment, but I strongly encourage you to explore it, because it offers a lot of insight into the dynamic behavior of the molecule. I have included the link to the paper in the description for true lovers of organic chemistry. For now, let's focus on the signal at room temperature. 3,4-homotropylidine consists of seven different hydrogens, but at room temperature, only one broad signal is observed. This can be explained by the dynamic behavior of the molecule. As the rapid co arrangement causes the NMR signal to reflect the average structure of the two isomers. Another key result from this experiment is that the most stable form of the molecule is the chair conformation. For the copy arrangement to occur, the molecule must adopt a boat-like conformation, which is less stable due to the strict clash between two hydrogens. Thus, the total energy required for the rearrangement includes the activation energy for the co-process, as well as the energy needed for the conformational change. Doring and Rolf proposed that the co-rearrangement could be even faster if the energy required for the conformational change were eliminated. They hypothesized this could be happen if the molecule were locked into the boat like conformation using a third ethylene bridge between the cyclopropan ring and the carbon at the opposite end of the molecule. This hypothetical molecule is known as bulbuline. At the time, the existence of this molecule was merely a concept. However, within a year, Gerhard Schroeder announced the formation of bulbuline through the photolysis of the dimer of cyclooctatetrine.